Well, a few things I learned in the first presentation is that Mike Duke failed you on spelling. IOT doesn't have an S in it. <laughs> so, but I've been trying to remove the D out of IOT for some time. And I just wind up being the idiot in that. A couple of things that you'll know difference between Mike and I is, as I talk about this, one, I do not come from the technology side, the digital side, the software side. I'm, I'm really new to this. I, I really am. I stand in front of a lot of software developers and, 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 and folks like that, and my VCR still flashes 12 o'clock. All right? So a little bit of context of where I come from. I come from the manufacturing side of things. And, and I've always been cooler than Mike. <laughs> so I, I, saw, I saw the picture in Mike's uh, presentation in rehearsal. He shouldn't have shown me his, played his cards. Uh, that's me on the right when I was uh, 15 years old, and that was my motorcycle that I used to race, so I've always been a bit cooler than you. Uh, thank you. And But really what I'm passionate about, these two little girls on the left-hand side who are also cooler than Mike. Oh, <laughs> I'll stop picking on Mike <laughs> no. sometime next year. So, but, you know, uh, a mechanical engineer, um, farmer, uh, just I, I like to do things uh, with my hands, uh, went into thermal processing, and I found myself in this digital transformation world. Uh, it's been really exciting, and so my presentation is going to be a bit different than Mike's because it's going to be a real true case study, the one that I'm living today and the one I'm transforming right now, and it's still happening, and I still don't know where I'm going to end up. So what I'll do is take you a little bit on my journey so far, and uh, I, I don't know where it's going to end. And so hopefully that's some interest in some of the learnings that I've had along the way. Uh, I think one of, the, one of the things that I've realized as I've, as I've started into this was, is it IoT or IOP? Because I also have trouble spelling. Um, is it the Internet of Things? And remember, I just learned what that meant in November last year, right? Is it the Internet of Things or the Internet of Paul? I mean, is it the Internet of People, right? Um, and so if you look at these disruptive entries into the marketplace, like Uber doesn't own a single car, right? And, and that's the whole, you know, the whole, most businesses, 40% of the businesses won't survive in 10 years. Well, Amazon doesn't really own a storefront, you know, in, in that sense of the word. Uh, uh, Airbnb doesn't own a hotel, right? And they're really disruptive in the industry. The interesting thing, if you look into that, they all connect people in some way. And so one of the things that, as I walk into the digital transformation, who are we transforming? And I mean, we start, we're trans, who's doing the transforming? That computer or that desk over there doesn't care that something's changing. Right? So transformation is another word of change. And, and these things don't care. It's the people that care. It's the people's lives that are impacted. It's, the, and it's our customers. It's our colleagues. And so let's not forget about the people side of it. And that's been one of the key learnings that I've had along this transformation. So, so let's dive into a little bit. And I'll start backwards. Uh, you know, one of the things I learned from Mike, and I met him last year, and, and we did a workshop, and one of the things I learned was, help me Mike, the what, the why, the why are we doing this, the how, the those that. questions, and, 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 well, my presentation is going to go backwards, all right, so bear with me, follow along this, this presentation journey with me, if you will, because it's going to go backwards, but this is how it happens. It, most people or most companies that make something or have a physical product that's not in the software development type things and now Hirsch we were talking before the before out here that all these companies are becoming software companies now Home Depot or or, or Bueller or uh, I, I work for a company that's not a not a software company Bueller's hundred and fifty eight years old still owned by the same family and make roller mills and other food processing equipment and we have 65 software developers in our company what are we doing right so 
Isn't that interesting? Right? So the typical story is of these companies that have a product, they make a product. And they make another product, so let's make a digital product. So that's what we did. So let's take the first step on my digital journey. We made a product. Now this sexy beast here is a hot metal box. Right? And I can say that with lots of passion. I've spent 20 years building dryers. And those in the room are like, what? So this thing, something that looks like this, is responsible. I'm going to wake them up. It's responsible for making Cheetos <laughs> and Doritos. And let me go across the industry so I can be fair to everybody. Frosted Flakes and your dog's dog food and your cat's cat food. Right? Anything that's in a bag in our grocery stores has gone through something that looks like this. And it's big. It wouldn't fit in this room. Long, lots, of in, lots of engineering and, and thermal processing and the, and the knowledge inside this, this dryer, industrial dryer, is, is unique and special and, and only those people like myself care about it. Just like you care about the code potentially in the software and I'm just going, what? Right? So what this, this sexy hot metal box does is really cool and it actually has a big impact on our food supply chain. A major impact on our food supply chain. So we're smart about that and we sell this hot metal box for a good living and we've, we've done so for many, many years and we obviously know what we're doing and we're excited about that and we have competitors that know what they're doing and it's, it's, the, a, nice, it's a nice marketplace. So we took and we put some sensors on it. Let's enter into IoT, let's develop some sensors, we're going to put some sensors on it, and we're going to collect data, and let's draw a picture of the cloud, and data's going to, I don't know where the cloud is, Mike. <laughs> so data's going to go to this cloud, and we're going to do some analytics on this data in the cloud, and we're going to do something for our customers, and we're excited about this, and let's spend money on this. All right? Yeah. Let's spend money on this, right? I, I've, I've, been to, I've been to a lot of conferences in this short amount of time, and I'm having a hard time finding people making money on this. All right? So uh, you can, obviously. Um, but it, it needs to be all the way along the food chain. If we're going to make a change and there's going to be a transformation, then there's profit all along the way, or else change doesn't keep happening. Like, you know, my customers also need to make money, and their customers need to make money, and, and it just can't be an investment into a black hole. And so, okay, so we start developing a business plan. All right, so now let's, let's, we're, we're starting to figure this out. We've got some ones and zeros coming from the dryer. We've got some clouds. We're getting some people, some experts, and we're going to make some dashboards, and we're going to have this conversation. And, and that's where it all started to fall apart. Right. So I, I would call our customers. I was VP of sales, so we, and we all know I like to talk. So I'd call the customers, and with some help of some friends, I made about 20,000 phone calls. Um, and 80% of those phone calls went something like this. We already have that. I mean, and talking about scary. I've spent this money. Mike's not cheap. Uh, I've spent this money. I, I've developed some stuff, and 80% of them already have this. So I needed a new language because they didn't have it. They thought they had it, but they didn't have it. So I'm talking about the wrong thing. That was the first part of my digital transformation aha moment that I was having the wrong conversation. All right? So maybe I was on to something, maybe my product that I developed was good, but I was having the wrong conversation about it. All right, so let's change the game a little bit. All right, so I had these products, I had the digital services, and I started looking at, well, I, now I did some basic, some basic stuff that, hey, these two products only match, only match 30% of my customers. So uh, now this is something novel, I'm thinking about 
sales enablement stuff. And I don't want to go down that whole path of sales enablement, but don't forget that part of it, right? So I needed a sales team. Uh, uh, digital transformation involves all people in the organization. Again, don't forget the people in the organization. And so uh, how, how do we get these guys to talk about this stuff? this digital stuff, right, that they can't see, touch, or feel, how do you get them to talk about it? And one of the first things I learned was, let's involve them in the conversation early. And David's helping me do some work as well, and he'll realize that we haven't gotten that right either. And we're, we're working on it, and it's a challenge. But let's, let's get them involved with, them, with it early. And so, we reorganized and repackaged what we're doing into something that started sounding to the customer like that can be a value to me because we believe there was value. All right? Remember, I'm going backwards in this, right? Backwards from the way I should go. And so I wanted to create a continuous interaction, an intimacy with the customer, a robust value. And then I got to the point where let's create a relationship. And I, that, to me, was a defining moment when I started thinking about the people, right? Uh, because why I'm able to sell hot metal boxes, uh, and dryers, why I'm able to sell hot metal boxes uh, is not because I can build a metal box better than somebody else, right? It's because of the process knowledge. Okay, so that's my core value. And for anybody in the room that may produce a product, find out what your core value is. Because digital transformation doesn't mean, doesn't have to mean, that you need a new core value. Right? Digital transformation can mean that you deliver that core value in a different way. Right? If, for example, if I all of a sudden say, I'm going to sell sensors and my software platform to my customers, then I'm a software company. It's, and I, that's not my core value. I don't know what I'm doing. But if I use those things, if I use sensors and platforms to enable me to deliver my core value, that's sustainable proposition for me. And that started helping my colleagues get behind this. Because now I can look at my sales team and say, say, Jeffrey, you already know how to sell this. You've been selling hot metal boxes for years. Using that value proposition to my thermal processing expertise. My IoT and digital product is just another thermal processing IoT thermal processing is expertise. I'm just delivering it in a different way. So we created a digital relationship with our customers. And I started having that conversation with our customers. Now, why? Why? So that alone and, and that, that conversation is not very motivating or very powerful without the why. And I'm still in, in this part of my presentation, I'm still inside my company. I'm still inside the walls, right? But why? For us, we found a very big why. Um, you look at this. 24% of the global emissions come from agriculture. 69% of the water usage stem from agriculture. A third of the global energy goes into the food production from field to fork. But a third of all food produced is wasted. And that's, that's striking, right? So I have the benefit of working for a company that has, well, it's nice that it's a, a private health company and they, they're focused on more of a long-term goal. So that's a benefit. But there's a higher calling, if you will, of why we're doing this. Right? So one of our products is um, uh, it helps find aflatoxin inside of corn and sorts that aflatoxin out before it causes, causes uh, cancer and other problems in, in parts of the world that have high aflatoxin rates in corn. So that's pretty cool. 
Now, you wouldn't do that for a profit thing because that's, that's not a part of the world you're going to make a lot of money. But you would do that if you want to secure the food supply chain. All right, so having a mission statement that's a little bit of a higher calling is beneficial and somebody can rally behind. In 2050, there will be 9 billion people in the world. And right now, we can't, feel, we can't feed those people. We're short. Right? So one of our missions is to reduce waste by up to 30% in 2020. If we do that, then we can feed those people. A great example, we, we've, we've thrown some stuff up here. Um, IBM, Watson, they, they put out something that were they, with Walmart, I believe, as well, where they did a blockchain uh, tracking of mangoes and tuna. It's really cool. I thought it was a great example of using blockchain to track things as well. Uh, but sticking on the save the world thing, you're probably not going to feed the hungry people of the world in 2050 with mangoes and tuna. Uh, so if you look at the commodities side of the chain for us, it's let's track the corn, let's track the rice and stuff. So we're in a unique position that 65% of the world's grain run through our equipment. So that was something to tr do the blockchain to track from farm to fork. Now, where's all that going? I'm just stop here for a second out of my digital transformation conversation and talk about how a particular manufacturing company might explore something as technology driven or digital related as blockchain to track from farm to fork. Well, if I'm going to have that higher mission of let's feed the world in 2050, then I need to stop wasting food. And one example, let's say I had a food safety incident here. Somebody ate something, got sick. And you trace that back to where it happened. That's what you want to do. You want to trace it back to where it happened. right? How that works today is you go back one step over and say, uh, did this corn come from you? Well, it probably came from company A, B, or C. Okay. So we go to company A. Did this corn come from you? Well, it probably came from A, B, or C. And by the time we get back here, the funnel has spread out very wide. So what do you do in a food safety incident? You recall all that food in the whole funnel. You recall it all. And imagine how much good food you throw away in that process. Right? If you had blockchain traceability that said, all right, person got sick here, I'm going to trace back to that truck wasn't clean when it picked up this product because I don't have its certification. I don't have this contract. Right? Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recall. It's still going to happen, but I'm going to recall this stripe of product here. And now I keep the rest of the food in the food chain. Right? So that's an example. Higher calling was a little bit of our mission. So with that mission in place, and understanding our market, we, we need, to, tie, we need to, to drive on and tie it forward. So let me paint a little bit of a picture of what my customers look like now, because I'm going now outside of our company. You're all with me. You're digitally transformed. You're going to sell this product. You have a higher mission. Feeding people sounds like a good idea. Okay. So let's move out to my customers. We're going to move out to the customers, right? So what do they look like? And so I tried to wrap my head around this. I'm talking to the customers, and 80% of them says, I've already got this. And, I'm trying, and that's bad, scary news for me, Mike. So I'm trying my best to, to understand what this is about. So let's take a typical food producer. Now we know now from the, the higher calling that one third of the food produced is wasted. Probably not on my kid's plate, but actually in the manufacturing side of things. So. One third of the food's wasted, so where's that happen? A typical food producer right now, what I realized was they're smart. And they've been doing this for a long time, and they have data, they have information, and they have controls. Right? So how that would work was in the 1950s and 60s, I could probably go back further, but in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, you make a food product that began in somebody's kitchen. And then, I mean, a Cheeto one day was started out in somebody's kitchen somewhere. There's a party going on. I don't know what happened, but that happened, right? So that was a, 
uh, artesian, a craftsman that made this thing, had passion about this. Ooh, you got to try this thing. Oh, you got it will turn your fingers orange. It's really cool. Try this, right? All right. Once you eat one, you cannot stop. You'll feel terrible later, but just keep going. All right. Artesian craftsmen, they cared about it. They knew how to make it. They had to crunch, the mouthfeel, the moisture, the, oh, the flavor, the taste. It was there, right? In 1970s, late 70s, 80s, 90s, computers entered into the industrial food manufacturing arena. Good thing. Data came, good thing. Controls came, good thing. Consequence to that is the person operating the machines became just that, somebody who could turn on the machine. Not the craftsman artesian who said, oh, I love the way this Cheeto sticks to my finger. So, you just had somebody turn on the machine. All right. Folks like Bueller did well with that because we were the solution providers and we had process knowledge. So these, so these guys began looking for solution providers to say, I need your help. I need your process knowledge. And today what they do is they get our help with a seminar, a lunch and learn, a phone call, or bump into each other at the mall. It's a one single point in time. Right? What I see soon is the food producer having data on the cloud. And I, all right, I don't want to miss the nuance here, and I only have a few minutes, but I don't want to miss the nuance here of the data on the cloud and what that means. If I'm a process knowledge holder and I'm, a, and I'm using this to share my process knowledge, right, for the first time ever, I can see my customer's problems. Right? And there's a lot of value in that. I mean, cloud changes the way we share music with family and friends. It changes the way we share movies. It changes the way I bank. It change, Okay, imagine how it can change the way I can help my, my customers, right? So if I can see their dirty laundry, I can help them sort their laundry and do it on a real-time basis, right? And so then I create a digital relationship uh, a simple example, phone call with a customer. I've had this phone call before 10 years ago where we had some solutions. We had some really fancy controls. Things were running my big metal box perfectly, right? And the cust if something would go wrong and the customer would just not call me. What a terrible thing, a customer not call you when you have a problem and you don't know about it. Or they call you and cuss at you. I can at least handle that and go solve the problem. Now, customer calls up, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yes, I am. <coughs> Have you tried this? Okay, thanks man, hangs up the phone. Different relationship. So there's an opportunity for customer service and a different relationship with the customers in this room. All right, so real fast, now I've gone backwards in my digital transformation. As we unpack this, as we got into this, it's where I met Mike, we did a workshop, and he, and he helped do some persona things. I do think that works very important to understand all these people I'm talking about. Uh, I also, uh, this, this lovely picture over here, probably, Doug's probably not happy with that picture, but that's okay. He's a good looking guy normally. Um, I wish he was here, that'd been more funny if he was here. Uh, but these green sheets were an obnoxious piece of papers. A little bit of physical stuff. Don't overlook this in the digital change. Everything doesn't have to happen on a computer. Just because you can automate it doesn't mean you should. We're still people, right? So I put a bunch of paper on the wall throughout my company for one week. Monday night, snuck in like a little ninja, put some paper everywhere, green obnoxious paper, with digital services here stamped on it, right? And just, and just absolutely covered my office. Manufacturing, the guys who are welding the hot metal box, they got paper everywhere. I was enemy number one. Like, what in the world is this digital service? I got people who were mad at me. I got people who thought it was cool. I thought I got the work. But at the end of the week, I said, okay, Thursday I'm available in the conference room. Who wants to come listen to me? And almost three quarters of my company drifted in and out of that conference room going, what's this all about? 
Sad part is I didn't know what it was about at that point in time. But I talked and I made a good story. And the thing is, if a customer calls now and my receptionist answers the phone, hey, do you do anything with digital stuff? Yes, I do. Let me get in touch with this group. So there has to be a real core basic conversation. And that can't stop with one time. It, it's got to happen. Now, the, the cool part, and I was going to insert a video, but I didn't. Uh, the cool part is that on the last day, I did get rid of all the paper and replaced it with a video of my daughters saying welcome to the digital transformation. And that was a cute video, and it, it went through, and, and, so I, and I cleaned everything up. So uh, it, don't, don't underestimate, again, the people side of things. So I talked about it, what we learned. Um, it, it, you have to listen to the customer. You have to listen to your customers. It's just not a product shoved into the marketplace, and sometimes we forget that. In classical R and D and M to M type development, we all know that you have to have customer trials and stuff. Uh, the food people are the best at it. They, I mean, they run taste tests and taste trials and taste markets and all this other stuff. Manufacturing people are pretty good at it. I mean, I'm going to build this thing and I'm going to make sure it works and I'm going to prove it out and then I'm going to, you know, car people are pretty good at it, the automotive group, they'll, they'll camouflage something that makes us think that we don't know what the car looks like and they'll drive it around, you'll see it in car and driver and stuff and they'll test it and get feedbacks and stuff. I, from an outsider looking in, software people are awful at it. They develop something to shove it at you, All right? So as we're in this process, it's really cool that we can develop stuff and shove it out fast. But don't forget to drag around, drag the other people with you and your customers' thoughts with you. Language, in my mind, and that's why I titled the slide a new language. Language is extremely important. I'll share with you the conversation I have with the customer now, the before and after, and I think you'll get the context. My first, con first conversation was like this. David, I got this really cool product. It's moisture and it does moisture uh, control stuff. And David would come back to me and says, what sensor are you using? Well, I'm using this sensor. Well, what's it run off? It's got microwave in it. Oh, we've tried that before. We don't, it didn't work for us. That conversation didn't go anywhere. My conversations with my customers now sound a bit like this. Tell me about your operator's day. What challenges do they face? Do all your operators face those challenges in the same way? Respond to them in the same way? You know, and so you start walking down a, a, a process focused on the people. right? Because for the first time ever, I believe, unlike the computers of the 80s stuff that's got digital stuff, when we talk about the scary AI and replace the people, I think we really have an opportunity here to have technology leverage the power of the people. And that, and that helps in the digital transformation quite a bit on, on both ends. So it's a new language. It's a conversation focused on value. Keep your company's core value proposition in play. Uh, maybe there's a chance to leverage new value. That's great. That's fine. But don't, don't, don't lose your identity. Right? It, maybe for Halloween, dress up as somebody different, but don't lose your identity. The conversation does not have to be on technology. It can be about delivering value. You don't have to start the conversation out with this really cool printer I got for Christmas. You, you yeah. don't. <laughs> so, it doesn't have to be about technology. It can be about that person's the person's problems and areas they're trying to solve. And the technology can be the thing that helps solve it. But start the conversation with the person and the people and their, and their problems. And let's not put things first. In the end, people are the ones making the decision. That's all I got. Thank you, Paul. Do you have any questions to Paul or Mike? Okay, all right then. So thank you for coming for our seminar. Inside the brochure, we have a survey. We will appreciate if you uh, give us some feedback to improve it for the future seminars. Okay. Um, as 
Okay. Uh, so you mentioned kind of the challenge of kind of being in this space and how businesses are making money on kind of digital investment. So kind of like as you've gone through that process, you know, have you are you in a place where you can evaluate kind of the investment you guys have made as an organization versus kind of the opportunity cost of not doing anything? Right. Um, yeah, I can touch on that. Uh, uh, there is a substantial investment up front, especially as a, co a company that's that's new in the software thing. So I I think if we could go back and do it again, we could do it more efficiently and do it better and quicker. And but that's always hindsight. It's always twenty twenty. I I think if you start with your value proposition to those people first, you could probably get to the point you want to be. Um, and I don't throw that term value proposition around very loosely. Uh, if you come from that point of view. You can make your customers a lot of money with this. And there's no reason why that can't be profitable for you too. And that's important because if, you know, if we don't make money, we'll stop doing this. And if we stop doing this, we're not going to feed people. right? So it, it, it all goes around, but I do think there's room in there that all parties can be profitable. And, and, so, and we shouldn't lose focus on that. Uh, we're... We've been down this journey for a year, um, and and we're starting to go in the, in the right way where it's making money for our customers and for us. Okay. Yeah. Um, what percentage of these manufacturers that can go out to have gone digital but didn't know how to use it, hmm. and so they had this. $150,000 sensor sitting there, but it did nothing more than hey, we pointed out, hey, we use sensors. A large percentage. And that's that's growing by the minute. Uh, a, a lot of the customers that I have around the world, during this conversation, they're also working on their own IoT platforms and things of that nature. Uh, and that scared me at first. I, am I competing against that? Am I competing against the, the companies that specialize in this and, and across the board, right? And there's where you see where sticking to my guns means something, right? Because the one thing they don't have is the thing that lets us sell our hot metal boxes to begin with. And that's our, in that particular case, our thermal processing knowledge. So I've been to customers that says, I've got full digital connection, I've got all these sensors in place, and my response is, fantastic, that's great, that just helps me get to my knowledge to you even faster and better. Again, because I'm not trying to make money on the hardware and stuff. I'm not losing money on it, but it's the delivering of the process knowledge. And so that value proposition was carved, had carved out a business for me, for my company, um, already. And so if I play in that territory, then I'm not threatened by these other things. I'm not saying you can't get out more, but in this particular case, um, it's helped us to stay focused. I, money wise, staying focused has helped us a lot. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, and lastly, I wanted to add what in our brochure in the end, uh, there is a QR code uh, which will bring you to digital transformation here so you can um, evaluate your score in digital transformation. So again, thank you very much for coming. Have a good day.